Well, first, I was asked, would you do a image of St. Francis? And then, but then I thought, well, they would like to see a St. Francis that's very benign and he's in your garden and well, looking over the, the plants and has some birds around him. And I thought, well, he was, had more, he had more to him, you know, God had given him so many graces and visions of, you know, what is possible and what was needed. And uh, I, a humanitarian and yet someone that was aware of all creation and wanted to bring people to honor that creation. And so, I, th so there was that part. I wanted to show the social, uh, you know, his social um, look at the world and his care and love for God's cre people, creation, creatures, all animals, life as well as the earth and the sun and the moon and the wind and rain and water, all, all of it, it's part of creation that we should honor and look at with care. And so and that was the, the, the dilemma, how do I do it? And then how do I arrange it so that everything would um, make sense? And so I kept making lots of drawings and then uh, but I, I, I also made uh, many ideas for the central panel. I wanted to show them there in nature, but um, not so benign, but really it, as he looks out into the earth around him and, and the landscape. So it's a very elaborate landscape. But what inspired that was that I had re remembered that many years earlier, I had gone to New York and I visited the Frick Museum the Frick Museum is a small museum, but it's very good collection. And there was one sp specific painting that I remembered so well. It was called Saint Francis in Ecstasy. And it was done by uh, Giovanni, Giovanni Bellini. And the, uh, the, that particular painting uh, was such a beautiful uh, concept. And so I went back to look at it and study it. My, my vision was very different from his, but I wanted to capture the idea of Francis in ecstasy in front of the, these mountains. And then it's but surrounded in a forest with filled with animals that are watching Francis. And then also he looks far away into the distance in the little towns. So surrounding this scene, so this is the scene where a cave where he used to go to meditate and pray. Uh, then I have 24 scenes. So that was the complex. How do you fit everything together to make it symmetrical and make it interesting so that you see it's not just uh, we are so complex as people that we aren't just one event or one uh, issue where many uh, parts to our lives and many things that have influenced us. So I wanted to show those. So I start from when he was with his family, going through the conversion that he had. He was a, a wealthy uh, son of a wealthy merchant and how he changed and he wanted to really serve people, especially poor people and people that were, uh, that didn't have the, all the, uh, the wealth or the uh, you know, that were, that, that, um, so that weren't abundant, but ordinary working people, people that worked in the fields, the shepherds. And so he, um, he so I try to show the development. Some of the, uh, these smaller images I create, I turned into bigger uh, paintings over the years. But in order to do all this, I had to do many, many, many studies and drawings and thinking about what I was going to do. And so that was in 84. And then I created a lithograph. The lithograph was very, um, uh, the colors were more pastel. I, they, they were all, I only had enough money to print six colors. And they took me a, a few months to print the image. And it was a lithography, which is, was not something that I, I, I knew how to deal with, with such a complex image. Uh, it was not one of the printmaking that I had a, a great ability to do. But then I, 
it, it was fine and people liked it a lot as an image. But then uh, one day, um, the, my pastor uh, in 1999, so 84 to 1999, uh, my pastor said, John, why don't you paint one? I bet it would be really exciting and people would, re would really enjoy it. So it took me three months to paint it. And that was the, that's what this um, G. Clay print is based on that painting. The painting eventually ended up purchased by uh, Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's a very complex, very important work for me because it was so much went into it, so much time, so much of creativity of finding ideas. And so, um, that, and that's what this is here. But I, I wanted to connect with your uh, Peaceable Kingdom uh, um, festival, the theme. Uh, there's one uh, panel right here. It's called Francis the Peacemaker because he would go to the different uh, towns and, and often there would be families that would be feuding. Go back to Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> so you have that idea, you know, there was all, all this rivalry. And, uh, and so he would try to bring, uh, talk to each of the different groups that were feuding and try to bring them together and try to find ways that they could uh, find harmony and overcome their uh, resentments. So I like that idea that, you know, there's possibilities of, for peace and not always to go to violence or war. And uh, so then I also showed that how he cared for uh, people that were in need. So you'll see scenes like uh, Francis welcoming the homeless, Francis feeding the, the hungry, and how he, and here's uh, Francis visiting the sick here. And, but some of these, I went on to create um, bigger, bigger works, like I did uh, Francis and the birds, here's Francis and the birds, I created a painting based on that. Then I created um, another work called Francis and the Wolf, and also Francis and the fish, and uh, that image, I. I did it as a small watercolor after I'd done the drawings. I wanted to see what would be possible. Uh, so that has been a real influence on me. And also, uh, and this scene right here, which I went back and reworked a lot of the details on this scene, and that's when um, Francis is composing the canticle of the creation. The, it's called the song, the canticle of the sun, but it's actually the canticle of, of God's creation. And I went back and went into the little details. So this is like a, a deep, um, a miniature with miniatures in it. And I uh, very much influenced by the, um, the uh, illuminated manuscript from the medieval times. And from many cultures, they do that. Uh, this it's almost like a Tibetan uh, panel that they would do on the life of some of their, um, you know, people that are very high in spirituality, um, and they would have many uh, images around the, the central figure. This is very similar. So it, there's a lot of influences that brings me to this work. Also, even. Uh, medieval churches would have the life of a saint and then they would have the scenes from and little panels and also the uh, icons um, which was very amazing to me to see how they would have a central figure with many scenes from their life or the life of Christ and they'd have the scenes that would depict important uh, times in the life of that person whether it was Jesus or the apostles, or anyway. So this is um, my work, but it's, I consider it one of the most elaborate of my paintings, one of them, and that's why I decided to go back and refine it and really work it through very carefully. So it took from May to October, and 
it, you know, to refine it, go back and re retouch things to uh, recreate the lettering so they would be very sharp. Uh, so this is my Francis, and I'm so honored that you have it in your church, along with some of the other works that are part of my uh, the, the work that I've done over the years, or the art that I've done. And thank you, because that's a great support to me to know that people care for it, that they want to have it in their church. And also thank you for your uh, hospitality when I was there a few years ago with visiting with the lands, the land family, Liz and Pete. So thank you so much.